He is uh, learning how to produce. While he does it, he gives credits to, credit to our producers who aren't actually here right now. This is how humble and amazing this cat is next well, to me. Well, let me see. If we, I'm trying to get live here. Let's see oh, if yeah. I can get it back to... Hopefully we're live. Doing the, he's live now. We should be uh, live. Yes. I see it coming He's doing the here. Facebook part now, Hans. Yeah, so that's, you, you can't see me here for a second. That's yeah. why I'm... I'm you can, you, you can hear middle. me, right? There we are right there. Oh, Perfect. There we're we on. are. Okay, so Hans, what, what you're going to do, you're going to hear us for a couple of minutes, and then uh, we'll bring you on. We, we do a little pre-show banner, and then we'll bring you here in a couple seconds. How's that? Okay? Sounds good. Okay. All right, James Scott Campbell, let's get this podcast started, right? That's right. Hello, you are at the net. And welcome, friends, to another episode of the At The Net podcast, powered by Texmo Productions. Working the soundboards in the back of the house are our producers, d Mac and Dave Bray. Time to say hello to your hosts, Craig Bell and AJ Shabria, as they're about to take us through three sets of tennis, talking life, and all the news as it seems to them. Ladies and gentlemen, Craig Bell. All right, all right, all right. I, I wanted to say that because of Matthew McConaughey. Little McConaughey. Yeah, right there. So thanks to our Athenet podcast girl, that would be Margot Carter, right? That's right. Speaking the Queen's English, right? Speaking the Queen's English and doing a... Superb job, maybe. I was going to say a muy bien job. Muy bien. <laughs> yeah, that's your word of the day, muy bien. Muy bien. Introduction and welcome fans of the great game. You are listening to Season 1, Episode 84. 84, 84. episodes wow. in about two in the years. Can. In the can. Yep, that's just about two years. That's the Net Podcast with this man on my left... Oh, you're right. That would be AJC, right? Are you AJC? And the host next to me, Craig Bell. Yes. Yes. And we're talking the great game of tennis as, as it, it seems, seems to, to us. us. Thanks go out to our good amigos at Tex-Mex Productions. That would be Darian D. Mac McBrayer and Dave the Brain from back of the house who are on the soundboard. Well, not really. You're the I just producer like to say that. tonight. You I just like saying, saying that. It. I just like saying that. Yeah. <laughs> Moving the dials and buttons to make us, well, we look like real people and sound like real people tonight. I hope uh, so. Yep. So we're live and not Memorex, right? Love it. Yeah, I don't think this man knows about Memorex. You know, he never heard that commercial. <laughs> so he's, he's a, that was about the time he was born. That's right. Yeah, In that, the 80s, yeah. You have to look that up, Hans. We'll let you, you know, try to figure that one out, what that joke, inside mm-hmm. joke is. Also, be sure to check out our good work on Fireside, iHeartRadio, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts. This is where I get really, I have to take a breath. Yeah. Right? Anchor Breaker, CastBox, Overcast, Pocket Cast, Radio Public, Spotify, and YouTube. That's all the important communication sites the kids find popular. Today, don't right? forget Twitch. Speaking Twitch? of oh. The, oh, yeah, what the kids Twitch. find popular. Oh, yeah, they Twitch, don't they? Do, do they twerk and, and Twitch at the same time? Yes. They do sometimes. Okay. And if you're female, sorry, amigos, uh, we'd like to read the opening intro. We always like female voices. We, the male voice is, is very pleasant, but there's... Plenty of plenty of dudes in here. Yeah, but yeah. we like female voices like Margot. If you'd like to read the opening intro, let's let us know. Hit us up on uh, message DMS or whatever you want to do. You know how to find Find us uh, looking to uh, do the intro in a foreign language, right? That's right. Yeah. Well, speaking of Mui Bien, Mui Bien is our buddy right there, Hans. Now we're gonna we're gonna ask you the official. We're gonna put you on the spot. <laughs> is it Hawk or Hotch? Is it hard K or more of a CH sound? Well, to be honest, my parents say Hotch, but then I guess in English you say Hawk, right? I would so think, it makes yeah. it easier to say Hawk so they know how to spell it out. You know? uh-huh. That's right. <laughs> well, we're glad to have you, Hans. We're going to call you Hans. How's that? Is that there, that's, there that's good goes. enough, isn't it? Right. Yeah. yeah. Well, actually, it's, he's, he's a trinomial like us. He's Hans Hotch. Verdugo. Yes, he's Love it. HHV. So he's he's in with us. He's in the trinomial with the three club. Three initials. That's yes. right. <laughs> That's right. You're part of us now. So you got AJC, yeah. CB1, and, and HHV. HHV. There we go. So we knew we liked you, Hans. You know, so yes. now you're part of the club. Yeah. He just needs a hat. We got to get him a hat. You're going to get a hat here in, here in a week or so. Hans, I'm going to hand deliver a hat to you, man. Yeah, we got some new All hats. Right. So you'll really be in the club. Yes. Yep. So he's, yes. But we're, we're glad to have you on the, on the show tonight, Hans. Uh, he's a uh, noted ATP tour professional. Professional, taking a little time uh, to uh, grace our presence uh, before hopefully uh, he's heading out again uh, probably next week. I'm sure he'll tell us where all he's going here, right. here in a couple of couple of minutes. But uh, Hans played some tennis over at Abilene Christian, still playing on the tour, trying to make, make, make it out there and, and doing a good job. I just heard him talking with uh, AJ, and he's been practicing with some local noted uh, professional players. Big Is time. It, big, big, yeah, big, big time. Big, Literally. Big, and, yeah. Big, 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 large, tall individual, right? Yeah. 
he plays with John Isner three, four times a week, getting John ready for Madrid. That's going to be fun. And uh, Hans himself is getting ready for some challengers. Yeah. So we're proud to have him on the show. Hans Hotch, thank yeah. you for joining us today. Yes, thank you, thank you, thank you very much. I'm going to be interested when AJ gets talking to you about uh, hitting with Big John, how you how you return a serve above your head. <laughs> you know, yeah, I mean, that thing's got to be going, unless, unless you move in on it at the service line. I don't thing think you, is, this guy is great at moving in on it. He's also great at going back a little. I've seen him practice, and he's just, just an unbelievable player. He's going to be like Zach Zvida. Remember when Zach was, he was returning serve from the fence. That's right. This kid we saw down at Austin in, what was it, October? Yep. He actually almost hit the fence, the back fence on a return of serve. I was, we were sitting there looking at each other like, how did he get it back? He got it back, too. He plays. He's, he loves it. All right. A but, pretty average height guy who, who has a great two-hander, and Hans, a, a lefty version of that. Yes. So yep. first set, we're yep. going to do a little background on Hans. Hans, we want to ask you how you got started in the great, great game of tennis back in and is it is Sinaloa where you learned how to te- play tennis? Right, right. Yeah. Um, so everything started because, uh, well, my parents, uh, they, they, you know, joined a tennis club. Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot of my family uh, relatives also joined at the same time. I guess everybody wanted to get some exercise in the afternoons. Uh and then back in, and I guess back in Mexico, the, these tennis clubs have all these basketball courts, tennis courts, swimming pools. So you're taking lessons from different sports. Yeah. Does that make sense? So yes. You go with the whole family from 3 p.m. till 7 p.m. and all the kids are taking lessons, different sports. Yeah. Um, like a sports complex ish, uh, and uh, so my mom would take tennis lessons. My other brothers will be taking swimming lessons, tennis lessons, basketball lessons. And, uh, and then I guess while my mom was taking a tennis lesson, they, they, they used to babysit for her and they started feeding me balls to uh-huh. entertain me, I guess. And then that was when I was three and a half years old. You were so. just tiny. Three and yeah. a half. Wow. Awesome. Yeah. And then my dad was working, you know, to be able to pay for everything. But, but, uh, yeah, my mom just took the kids to the, uh, tennis club every day and we would just camp out there for three four hours a day and play different sports and for me it was tennis i would skip all the other lessons you uh-huh. know i'll be like no no i don't want to swim i don't want to do karate whatever i just want to stay on the tennis court and that's what happened <laughs> <laughs> that's great uh-huh. um hey uh it's you and what three brothers uh two brothers, two brothers. uh actually one brother now uh, my oldest brother passed away in 2010 oh, sorry about so that. It's, uh, yeah it's me and uh, another guy he's two years older than me i'm the youngest one you're the youngest we've got a great listener named rick ekloff he's actually a local tennis player and he's asking if you have a brother named franz that would have been too perfect to have a Hans and a Franz, huh? Did you get that reference? Hans and Franz. There you go. Because yeah, we're, yeah. we're here to pump you, you up. up. You are. <laughs> we, we are here to pump you oh. up. Yeah. Now that's the drama. Oh. I would oh. like to show my flex ability. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you got to find a doubles partner named uh, named Franz. Franz. Oh, that'd be that'd be awesome. I mean, oh on. man, we'll yeah. make a lot of. Sponsorship deals. Oh, you you would, you'd make more than the Bryan brothers if <laughs> right. you're a Hans and Franz, and right. then you get Dana Carvey and Ke- Kevin Nealon <laughs> yeah. to join you in a commercial and uh, shake hands with them after. Yeah. But then they can't shake hands because they're too because their biceps know, they're are too, too big. <laughs> they're too pumped up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. We take steroids. <laughs> Yeah, no, that would that would be really funny. I'm trying to think if there's any Franz tennis players, right? There's used to be Franz uh, Beckenbauer, wasn't it? Franz yeah, the Beckenbauer? soccer player from yeah. Germany. Yep. All right, so I'm trying to think if there's any tennis players named Franz. You probably might know of yeah. any. Are there any out there right now on the tour? Nate, no, 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 no. Yeah. I, I would, I would have known. That's of for course, sure. Of course, that well, would have been I'll, awesome. I'll tell you what. We'll do, AJ will be Franz in, in, <laughs> in a tournament. We're going to put him as Franz Chabria, and then you can play with him. So we're, we're, we're going to be so good. I'm righty. You're lefty. We got the touch and the returns. You, we we use it. vocal rackets sometimes. You yeah, can, you can I love that, a vocal. Yeah, <laughs> you can play with that Boris Becker it's racket. So funny. <laughs> oh, sorry, we went down the wrong rabbit uh, We hole. did. We did. We, sorry. Sorry. Yeah. Hey, so you're telling us be, being. You're telling us about. Uh, being a kid, taking all those tennis lessons and uh, and minimizing some of the basketball and the swimming, um, 
Tell us a little bit about how you went from three and a half year old who took a lot of lessons to an elite junior nationally ranked in Mexico and then getting a crack at playing college tennis up here in Texas. So, yeah, uh, to be honest, my whole childhood, it, it was it was recreational. You know what I mean? I, I was I was lucky enough to. Uh, I was probably the youngest kid out of all the kids that were taking lessons over there at that tennis club. And that's how I, I, I guess my level picked up because I'll be playing against older kids all the time. Interesting. But it was all, it was all recreational. Um, and, and then when I was eight years old, I was, I was playing tournaments, national tournaments, and I was really good nationally under tens because i i've been playing for six years already i'm a veteran you know <laughs> and, all, and all these kids are just picking it up they're like just starting so i guess under tens i was i was very very good yeah. and then but it was all recreational it was all playing games it was all doing drills and it, it was never intense you know and then when, once i got to under 12s under 14s I wasn't as good because all these kids were taking it more serious. They were getting more years under the, their, uh, their belts. Yeah. And, uh, and me, I was just recreationally playing at, at the tennis club, you know? And, uh, I got a little chubby. I remember I was eating a lot of chips and just being a kid. Uh -huh. And then, uh, but the state and, and region, all of that, I was, I was always the top, but then once it, I got to the national level, I wasn't as good. I'll go down first or second round. I see. And, um, and then maybe when I was about 14 years old, um, uh, it became a little more serious. Um, this, this coach from Mexico city came to our city, Culiacan, and then, uh, -huh. uh they created this program of six, eight kids. And it was a little more, um, training, We'll be doing one hour of fitness and two hours, two hours of tennis. So it was more, um, I guess, uh, more um, organized, mm -hmm. if that's the word. And uh, and then and that I, I got better because for the first time I was doing something more organized, right? It was mm -hmm. more directed to to get better and not just have fun, right? Um, then this guy told me, hey, my brother is a, a coach, tennis coach in Mexico City, and he takes a lot of kids to these uh, ITF juniors. Uh -huh. And I'm like, what are you talking about? Yeah. What are those? He goes, oh, those are international junior tournaments, and there's a world ranking, and you can play Wimbledon, U.S. Open, and juniors. I'm like, what? Well, that's awesome, you know? And, and at this point, I, I was, you know, just making second round of nationals, yeah. and then and, and, – uh, it wasn't, I wasn't that good, but anyways, he goes, Hey, you should try it out. There's going to be an ITF in Guadalajara here and you should give it a try. Why not? So I go, I give it a try and I'm like, this is awesome. So I loved it. Next thing you know, I, I gathered a little money with my parents and, uh -huh. and I joined his brother who was taking kids to these ITFs and we go to Costa Rica, Cuba, El Salvador and, and, and uh four or five tournaments and and next thing you know first tournament i sign up for uh and this is in guatemala in costa rica and i won the first tournament you won the whole and thing I've never, yeah yeah and in doubles yeah and then i'm like well uh i never won a national but i won an itf how does this work right <laughs> so it, it went like that and then by the two months after that i go play another itf and I go warm up with this kid, and uh, and he's a Canadian kid, but he's Hispanic-looking. So I'm like, well, this doesn't make sense. So I'm sh chatting with them, and we go, hey, uh, what do you, where do you train? I'm like, well, I'm in Sinaloa. I'm looking for a place to train because I'm doing better, and I need to pick it up. He goes, well, my mom o owns a tennis academy up in Canada. Uh -huh. You should talk to her. I'm like, Okay, so we warm up and, you know, we get ready for our match and the mom is sitting there and I go talk to her and her name is Leslie March. Uh -huh. And uh, she goes, yeah, you want a place to train? I have a tennis academy up in Canada. You should come try it out. You know, I'll give you a little scholarship. You come up if you like it, you can stay. Well, I go home, tell my parents about it and, you know, they're like, what? You're crazy. I'm like, no, yes, I met this lady and she's got... So I gather a little money and I flew to Canada and that's where I end up 
staying for four years. That's where I went to high school. Four years. So this was four age years. age about 14 or 15. 15, 15. 15 and a half. Yeah. Incredible. So and I go there, and, and I start doing school in Canada. It's a boarding tennis academy. Yeah. Now there's 30 kids from all over the world doing the same thing I'm doing, and that was amazing for me. It was like going to Disneyland. It was all I wanted. You know, a tennis all day with 30 kids just – grinding and getting better and and uh knowing and, knowing you you made friends and you thrived you loved it right loved it it was so awesome loved it every minute of it hans and which then, uh, uh, which city was this in is this vancouver or montreal toronto where is it? this is uh niagara area niagara yeah. okay so near buffalo yeah. new york niagara yeah. falls yeah so Ontario, yeah. Southern Ontario. So the weather right. isn't terrible, but it's still indoors all winter, and uh, and you get to speak English. It's not like Montreal where right. you speak mostly French. Right, uh-huh. and then and then uh, my my English wasn't great at all. It was uh-huh. really bad. Then I learned English. Yeah. I, I my tennis got so much better because now I was doing real training tennis. Yeah. You know, like it was awesome, and I improved a lot, a lot, a lot just from, you know just doing the right things and you know of course i was a little i, I was talented because yeah. i've been playing since i was three years old right. so I, you know <laughs> uh, um, and it got better and better and and um then i was i had in mind that i wanted to play pro tennis yeah. right um then i started playing a a few futures uh and then I picked up my first point. I was like 17 years old. And, yeah. you know, you pick up your first ATP point and you think you're Roger Federer, you know? And, yes. And uh, it, it means nothing. I mean, I guess it means a lot. But at the end, the end of the day, you go, well, what's one point going to do, you yeah. know? <laughs> but uh, I picked it up and then I, I thought I was going pro till I got beat 6061 or 6062. I lost to this guy named. Uh, Alexander Sadeki, I think uh-huh. Sadeki from Switzerland. He beat my, uh, he beat me pretty good. And uh-huh. then that's when I said, I'm not ready for this. I need to go to college. Uh, then I went back to Canada and then I'm like, okay, I'm, I need to go to college cause I'm not good enough. These guys are too good. These guys are too strong and I can't handle it. Right. So then that's when I started thinking about college. Then. Yeah. And that's where our friend Hutton was it who yep. uh, recruited you from AC uh, Abilene Christian. So that's uh, another story. Yeah, I guess, tell us. Um, I can tell you guys about it. But uh, uh, I had my ATP point, and back in the day, uh-huh. we're talking 2008, 2007. Having one ATP point was like, oh my gosh, this guy's. We got to recruit this guy. Yes. Right? Nowadays is UTR, right? But back in the day, having an ATP point as a junior, it was a big deal. Right. So I had a lot of people come up to Canada and recruit me. And and I was uh, made the decision to go with Oklahoma University. Uh, and big then we're school. ready to go. Yeah. Big time conference. Big 12. Yeah. We're ready to go. This is before John Roddick, by the way. Yeah. Uh, the guy that recruited me was uh, the assistant coach who his name is Silvio Tanasui. He's from Romania. Yeah. But now he's the head coach at Cornell. Um, and then next thing you know, they give me the national letter of intent and everything. So I'm happy. Everything's good. I'm going to Oklahoma. And the next thing you know, I'm not eligible for D1, right? Cause I graduated late from high school and then I, I played see. futures on top of that. So the age is, is what they kind of got you on. It was, they give you a, a, uh, a graduation date. So when you start high school, they give you four years to finish, right? And yeah. then they give you an extra year. Anyways, I went over that extra yeah. year, and I played tournaments on top of that. So then it turns out I can't go D1. And and then I, I was like, well, my other option is go D2. And that's when I got in touch with Hutton Jones. Excellent. Yeah. And and from what I've seen, ACU was always one of the best Division two schools in the country. And now they play in Division one. Right, right. So when when I was looking for D two schools, I uh, I looked up D two rankings and top ten, and I said, I, I, if I want to go to D two, I want to go to a top ten school, and 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 they were there. So I got in touch with Hutton, and we were top five, top six in the nation. Now and then I graduated twenty thirteen, and then they became uh, Division one. After you, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Nice going. Tell well, us that's what happened. Yes, and Hans, tell us about the transition from um, uh, playing the top of Division Two college tennis to going to the ATP Tour. Tell us about that uh, that transition. Um, to be honest, uh, uh, Abilene Christian Hutton did a great job scheduling all. all all our most of our matches were Division One schools. To be honest, he was very, very, very good about that. Um, so I got to play number one against a lot of D one schools that were really good. And as you know, here in Texas, there's so many universities, right? So you don't have to go far to be playing top schools. And and you know, you play Baylor, you play A and M, you play Texas, you, TCU. You guys you can, played, yeah, yeah. TCU. You can play Texas Tech. You can play Oklahoma. You can play Oklahoma State. Yeah. You can, you know. And um, so, anyway, so I I did really good in, in Division II, uh, but I I never I never thought I was ready to go pro. It was never a thought. I never thought about going pro till my senior year, when all my friends started getting jobs. Right? Yeah. And I'm like, well. <laughs> what am I going to do? I'm doing business management, but business management, what does that mean? You know? So, and then all of a sudden, uh, I met this guy, um, uh, who told me about the ATP tours. Like you should give it a try and why not? And, um, uh, so I said, well, I'm going to try. All right, let's do it. And then, but this is like right before I was going to graduate. I never thought about it when I was going through my, my college career, to be honest, I was very focused on my friends, my family, because back day, that's when, when my brother passed away. So I was very, uh, I was not, I wasn't thinking about professional tennis. Yeah. I was thinking more about life and, and enjoying my time, right? That's so. beautiful. Uh, uh, whenever I've had uh, dinner or, or beer or whatever with you, I get the sense that you are nowhere near burned out when there are plenty of people who are your age in your sort of uh, circle of friends who play professional tennis who played so intensely in their teen years and then by college they were kind of burnt. And you seem the exact opposite, maybe because you were so recreational till 14, then you got pretty serious. You, basically, you're peaking later, which is a great yeah. thing, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think... You know, AJ, I think uh, what's worked for me is mm. that I've walked the walk, right? Yeah. I played juniors. I went to academy. I played college. I, I, I've i been playing college for me was so much fun. Yeah. It, it's just a, I've tried different things within tennis, if that makes sense. Yeah. Then I played singles. Now I'm playing doubles. Dubs. So it's been, it's been kind of – it's changed. It's, it hasn't been the same thing at all no. you know what i mean then i started playing a uh, uh league in germany like club tennis in germany yeah, but every is summer. It bundesliga that kind of the that level yeah that well bundesliga is the top league which i'm not in it but, but it's but that's the format right. yeah and yeah. it and that gives me refresh me uh, that refreshes me a lot too you know it's just yeah. different things in, within tennis that you can do right to keep it fresh and and exciting and fun i don't know i just Every stage has been different and fun, and I don't know. That's awesome. It's been good. And, and, and that really speaks to why you are totally not burned out and you're, uh, you're, you're very vibrant and ready to go. I want to go to the second set, which is um, all about current and future projects. Tell us a little bit about practicing with the likes of John Isner, uh, and tell us a little bit – now that's singles, but tell us a little bit also about the kind of practice you do in doubles. And I want to preface this by saying the first time I saw you play wasn't when you were at ACU playing TCU or Baylor or, or, uh, or SMU. It's when you um, were practice partner. You were a practice partner with Dante Bottini, um, Michael Chang coaching – Kay Nishikori yeah, yeah. and Kay needed uh, on indoor courts. Kay needed a lefty practice partner, and there is Hans Hotch, and <laughs> and you were beating up on him, returning his serve like it was it was like it was mine or something, you know. So tell us a little bit about pro tennis, practicing with huge names like Kay and Isner, and then tell us also about being a doubles player on the ATP tour. Yeah, to be honest, I've been lucky enough to practice with a lot of top guys yeah uh, i've been 
Yeah, I've hit with a lot of the top guys, and 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 uh, that keeps it a little more, I guess, real. You know, sometimes when you uh, when you're a kid or when you're, you know, playing futures, you don't see the light. You know, the light is so far away. <laughs> but once you, you know what I mean? Like you look at the guys on TV and you go, these guys are not playing on planet Earth. Yeah, They're somewhere some, else. Some these different guys, game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, I don't know, you know. But I don't know. Practicing with these guys makes me feel like, okay, this is not that big of a deal. Yeah, you know what I mean? you're in there, yeah. Yeah, so I don't know. It's awesome. And to be honest, I'm that guy that if, if somebody needs to practice, I'm always jumping in. I, I love striking the ball. I love striking the tennis ball. And and, uh, and I'm always down to hit, you know, if they ever need a warm-up or, yeah. or whatever. I, I'm always the guy signing the sheet and going on the practice court. Just, you know. Yeah. I, I'm the guy that I, I like. I need to hit a lot. Otherwise, I'm not ready does that does that make sense makes total sense you're so fit you yeah. want volume you want more and uh yeah. that brings me to asking you um here in america whether it's college kids or juniors sometimes coaches are like man um i love that kid because he can actually volley and not that many kids can volley you are a hell of a volleyer uh how did you become that that guy who could volley so well and come in and take balls early so well Great question. To be honest, uh, I don't know. It's been uh, it, it's been kind of confusing because um, because I'm very good uh, overall. I'm not like oh, you know, this guy can't hit from the baseline or this guy can't volley. Yeah. So I, I'm I'm decent at most areas. Yeah. So that makes it a little confusing, and it takes a little more time to kind of develop your game because you have too many options. I you see. Know? I see. Yeah. Uh, but now, as soon as I moved to doubles, I've, I, I've been getting up to the net, and obviously they've, my volleys have gotten better. And uh, because I've, I've been doing it too many times, yeah. But uh, I don't know. It's just uh, to be honest, tennis is a working process. It's an everyday deal, and yeah. it's just one little one percent better. And, and next thing you know, you have a decent game. <laughs> <laughs> when I saw you practicing with Nishikori, you were primarily taking uh, returns near the baseline. How do you do with John Isner's serve being, you know, one of the biggest serves of all time? Do you try to take it early or do you drift back and take it uh, a little later as it comes down? You know what? That's something that I've learned in the last maybe three, three years. I, I, I was always a guy rushing to get the ball early and to – beat the ball and catch it before it bounces high mm. it, but it turns out i was crowding my space a little too much i, I was uh and so i, I now i'm being a little more not, i'm not moving back but i'm being a little more patient and judging where the ball bounces to mm. see if i can move in or just uh I, I don't know i'm just i became very aware of of my my spacing not not just take it early just to take it early because next thing you know you hit it behind you right ouch you yeah. wanna... so with john uh, it's it, it's a tough one because his, his serve has a massive angle going down so i think <laughs> you got to cut it uh, when it's going out wide yeah. um it depends sometimes i move a little further back sometimes i i step in um, i don't know i guess the more confident i feel the more i can move in right yes yeah. and try and beat it but yeah. but I, I'm not yeah you can't back up with this serve you, you, you gotta you gotta meet the ball <laughs> you have to <laughs> yeah um, hey yeah. tell tell us let's shift gears from the the tour to Davis Cup you recently had the honor to represent Mako in Davis Cup uh, who did you play against what did it feel to hear you know when you win a game like it's game Mexico and not just games game for Hans you know what that's uh playing davis scott was probably one of my one of those dream dream come true moments yes. and the first time i played davis scott was maybe 2016 uh -huh. and i was playing singles back then my first match was a five setters five setter a four hours and 20 singles match uh, at home uh -huh. this is before COVID, obviously of where course. there was a crowd yeah, yeah. crowd at home 
that was a, a dream come true moment. You know, people always talk about Davis Cup and how playing for your country is is great, and and a lot of people hype it up, and it, and it's actually real. It's, it's actually real. It's a great feeling. It's a playing playing something, uh, playing for something better or more bigger than yourself yeah. is is what makes it cool, I guess. Amazing. It's hey, like who, college, yeah. Who did you play in 2021 in Davis Cup? Oh, we played, this is two months ago, we played Bulgaria in Bulgaria. Uh, now doubles. That was my first time playing Davis Cup uh-huh. in doubles. Uh, we beat Bulgaria and, and uh, amazing. Uh, it, it's <laughs> it's so fun because yeah. we all you all celebrate together you guys eat together and if we lose we all lose together and it's pretty sad you know (laughs) it becomes uh, like a funeral but but when you win it also becomes like a raging part everybody's so happy (laughs) you know it's so fun it's so fun it's just great stuff hey uh and when you play bulgaria their colors are red and white and green and so are yours what did you guys wear how did you work that out that's funny uh, I don't remember to be honest, <laughs> but yeah, it's the same colors. Yeah, it's the same colors. Did, did you see a bunch uh, of Secret Service guys in, in suits and sunglasses and earphones? You know, standing there, kind of security. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, is my lighting too dark? You're yeah, fine. You're you look fine. good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The the background is dark and your face is well lit, so it's good. We, we had a comment from Craig Carcino, oh, your buddy yes. Craig Carcino. He said, there he, is. he said, fortunately, your volleys are better than your English. I don't know what he means by that, but you know, I wouldn't take that line down. You know, we, so, yeah. you know I mean that. Craig Carcino. Craig Carcino. Yeah, yeah. The the good news is uh, his volleys are almost as good as his English. So let's not <laughs> let's not worry about Craig Carcino. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> there you I'm go. I'm going to test. I'm going to test Carcino on his Spanish. Yeah, that's I'm right. Ask him a few Spanish questions, see how how he handles. Like, what's up now, it. Carcino? Yeah, right. that's great. Yeah, right. well, you know, and he did rebound and said, "Hey, here's a serious one. Down yeah. the road, would would you lo- like to uh, captain the Mex- Mexican Davis Cup team? Would that be something that oh, you would wow. be interested in doing?" Yeah, we're starting to talk yeah. about future projects. Yeah. So yeah, give, give us. Sorry, we got a little ahead, yeah, but that's that would like be that would be a lot of fun. I think you know what the guy that uh, was. Uh, so we, we just went to Bulgaria, and, and the, we have a new captain uh-huh. this time around. And he was a player. He got to maybe 120, 130 in singles, and he was his first time as a captain. He played as a player many, many times. What's and his name? We probably know him. Miguel Gallardo. Gallardo, yes. See, yeah. And he, he, he was so into it. He loved it. He, he was like, oh, man, playing is fun, but coaching is also, I feel like I'm, I'm still playing. I'm part of it, you know? And so, he's yeah. he's uh, younger. He's maybe what uh, high thirties, low forties. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. Late thirties, maybe early forties. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I want to say maybe thirty nine, forty. I think I would love to do that at some point if it happens. You know, I don't know. There's a lot of people ahead of me. That's for sure. <laughs> hey, tell yeah. us about the link between your brain as a player who hasn't peaked yet. Or, or, or who, who is peaking a little later than some people peak. And then tell us a little bit about uh, the part of your brain that's also self-coaching and how that might translate to becoming a coach one day. One day. Speaking of brain right there. <laughs> what just happened? We have, speaking of coaching brain, we have uh, a, a guy who coaches a good level of tennis. Hans Hock, can you do you recognize this guy? What's up, guys? Hans, what's up, my man? Hey, Phil. Sir. I was like, wait, is it am I FaceTiming Philip right now or what? Yeah, we brought him on. That's what you we didn't need. see me for about. I'm going to change the screen here in a second, so we'll be able to see other than Philip's face. He's actually got a, got a, his mask on. I so, see, so he's I got see. you know he's been probably traveling out of the country, so he's got COVID. That's so a we don't, we fantastic don't. mask, Philip Farmer. How are you, Coach? I'm good, guys. I'm good. Yeah, surprise, surprise, Hans. I, I, uh, I wouldn't miss it. I had to, had to make a surprise appearance to uh, come say hello to you on the, on the podcast at the net, buddy. What a funny uh, moment. Yeah. I, well, the question I, I, that I was asking is what part of his brain is doing some of the coaching for himself? And here comes yep. his actual coach. Uh, tell us about Hans. Tell us about some of the things you learned from Philip and um, some of the things that you'll take into your career if one day you become a coach. You know what? One thing that uh, I think the reason why Philip and I have been 
working so well is because we we are a team right and he i take feedback he takes feedback and we together talk about my game and we try and come up with a plan together mm. i guess we're really really good friends so you were able to figure things out together you know i yeah. think that's uh that's a uh what the, the good coaches are those guys who you know you work together i i feel like I'm the type of guy that I, I give a lot of feedback and, and Philip is always so receptive and he's always trying to, to understand me. And, and he always, you know, I, I don't know. I think that's why it's worked out so well. We, we just communicate and we, we figure it out together. About a month ago, Philip was on our show and he used the word um, collaborative and uh, seeing yeah. it through the lens of your player. And it sounds like you yes. guys are uh, even more on the same page than uh, than I thought, which is wonderful. Yeah. Philip Farmer, w w we asked Hans a little bit about how he got so good at volleys. Uh, can you let us in on what you think are some of his strengths on a tennis court and off the court as well? Absolutely. And uh, first of all, again, I uh, apologize for, for having to do this from the, the car. I, I'm flying in within Nashville, and uh, but I, I, again, wouldn't miss it. And uh, flight Thank was you. a little bit delayed uh, on uh, coming in, but um, happy to be uh, on the podcast again with you guys Thank um, you. and with Hans as well. So, yeah, you know, I think um, as Hans uh, said it, you know, we have such a good uh, base with our friendship. And um, the communication is, is obviously key to most things in life and especially with coaching. And, um, you know, we, we sit and we, just, we talk about his game. We talk about goals. We, we talk about kind of where he's at right now. And, and, um, and that's the key that the communication lines are always open. And, and it's almost like we're just, you know, two friends kind of talking tennis back and forth. And then, you know, he's um, – He's unbelievable, uh, not only with his work ethic, uh -huh. but attention to detail. He's an incredibly hard worker, um, but he's also a great listener. And I think um, players not only have to be great listeners, but also the coach. It's very, very important because a lot of times we think of coaching, okay, we need to be the ones communicating and talking, and the player needs to be listening. But I think there's so much respect with both of us because it goes both ways. I try to be a really good listener in all my years of coaching, uh, and especially with Hans. I, you know, I like to hear his feedback. I like to hear his thoughts and point of view, as you mentioned, with, with his set of lens. It helps me understand him better, what he's going through, and, and where we're going as a team. So um, we just work really well together, good listening, good communication, and he's just unbelievably uh um, respectful and attention to detail in, in our in our lessons and uh, in our in our in any sessions that we have, whether it's mental off the court or obviously drilling, practicing, training on court. That's fantastic. I mean, it, we're a tennis podcast talking about tennis with a tour coach and a tour player, but everything you said could have been a business podcast. Yeah, yeah, R really yeah. everything. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. I mean, that's what it is. It is, it is a business for, for both Hans and myself. Right. Um, you know, he's out there, you know, grinding and, and, and working his butt off to, to, you know, try and make it in the top hundred, which has been a big goal of ours. And, you know, when we met a few years ago and decided yeah. to work together, he was still playing some singles and we made a very, very important business decision together yeah. about, you know, kind of foregoing the singles cause he's very, very good in singles. Mm -hmm and has had some incredible results, but I just felt like it was time for him to put that same time, energy, and, and effort into his doubles because he had kind of been floating, and correct me if I'm wrong, Hans, but I think between like 170 and 200, and uh, which is fantastic, but I felt like he should be top 100 and even top 50 um, once we started working on some things and once he started really kind of um, narrowing down the, uh, the training, the goals, um, for, for his doubles play uh, and his time. And uh, he made that commitment. We made that business decision together, that commitment together, and it has really paid off um, as he got into his first Grand Slam at the U.S. Open. And uh, he's won a few titles since then, and, and now he's kind of hovered between 120 and 130 consistently. Yeah. And in my mind, he's, he's top 100 and top 50 potential. So Excellent. it's definitely the business decision and the direction um, – has definitely paid off in my opinion.
That's awesome. Hans, you were in the U.S. Open, um, Philip just mentioned. But tell us about being in, uh, I think it was 2015, you played in the main draw of Toronto. Uh, was that a bit of a homecoming for you since you grew up, at least your high school years, up there in that area? Yeah, that, that Toronto tournament was the Pan Am Games. Uh-huh. I don't know if you guys oh. are familiar with that. Sure, Pan American Games, Pan-American. all the yeah. all the North America, South America, Central America. So you had yeah. like 50 friends was, in the same draw. That was amazing. Yeah. That was one of the – yeah, it was such a cool experience, you guys. The Pan Am Games, I don't think people talk about it that much, but it's like the mini Olympics, yeah. right, for, for, our, for our hemisphere. Americas. Yeah. Right. And it's so cool. It, you, you know, every sport, there's a parade, there's a everything. It's just amazing. It was, it was awesome. It was another highlight of my, my career that I, that I, I loved, right? And, uh, yeah, and, and then all my friends from Canada, high school friends and people, I used to stay with host families back uh-huh. in the day for, yeah. uh, for uh, the tennis academy, and uh, my host families were there. My parents came up. My brother came up. It was it was really cool. Yeah, that is awesome. I bet they were rooting for Mexico instead of Canada because of you. Right, <laughs> right, right, right. They, yeah, they showed up with some shirts, and it was great. But uh, hey, Philip, thanks a lot for your words. I mean, it, it means a lot to me to hear Philip talk about me and my game. Uh, I respect Philip a lot. You know, he, Philip's Philip has had a massive coaching career, as you guys know. Yes, uh, he's coached the best of the best, and. And I'm just lucky to to have him as a friend and as the coach as well. You are so humble. That's beautiful to hear. Philip, uh, great words there. Uh, Craig Bell. I appreciate that, buddy. Yeah. We, we want to – go ahead. No, I was going to say that uh, uh, Phil uh, – AJ said he's going to change his name to Franz, and so they can play doubles together, so they'd be Hans and Franz. Do you think that'd be a good – Hans and Franz. That's a, that's a scary team. <laughs> I want uh, – I want Philip – I want I got, Philip. I got, I, got my wife, uh, I got my wife driving up here, and she's she even laughed at it already, so she's ready to roll and come support you guys. Well, I I, she's gonna, I think she even said she's going to get some – T-shirts made. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> because oh. we will have so much pompadour, Natalia. And, 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 and Philip. Wouldn't, wouldn't that be a sight? <laughs> I love it. Philip, you got to coach us. Natalia, you're our strength trainer. Uh, she is going to pump us up. It's going to be great. Um, uh, Craig, we have to go yeah. to the third set, oh, which is did? hilarious yeah, and let's fun. Do that. Let's do it. Um, who are we rolling with here, sponsor-wise? Uh, sponsor-wise, that would be the great Master Systems. Uh, if you look up in the top right above us, that would be the Bla- the great Blair Descaray with Master Systems for all your court needs. Uh, he did the courts right behind us. Oh, beautiful. Uh, yeah, great job. That's seven years uh, ago, and they still look uh, brand new. They look amazing, yeah. That's anything that you need in uh, the world of tennis. Uh, I'm sure Coach Philly's worked with uh, the greatness of Blair Descaray on a time or two so he's he's our sponsor for the third set all right so here we go hans first band you saw in concert we already know phillips but we what what uh, band what was your first band was it like it was this canadian band huh? hetley it's not even it, it's not even recognized it's not famous nothing they're hetley. not it's not on the level of Rush or Drake? No, no, it's not. To be <laughs> honest, I haven't been to many concerts, so uh-huh. that's one thing that I got to do, yeah. So did you, uh, was it at the Molson Center? Did you have a couple of Molsons? <laughs> yeah, I had a couple of them, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> couple. <laughs> a quick, quick follow-up question. Uh, you are Pan American. You are from Mexico, yes. Canada, and the U.S. Mexico, Canada, or the U.S., who has the best beer? Good question. Mexico. Mexico. Ooh, a little okay. patriotism yeah. there. Mm. Yeah, I agree, yeah, I agree. yeah. I agree with that. You do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so which one are you going to go yeah. with? Like Dos Equis, uh, Corona, uh, Modelo. Sol, Mo- Modelo, Sol? Uh, yeah, I think I go Dos Equis. Really? Okay. Yeah, we sell a lot of those. Hans Hotch, the most interesting See, man, in the world. Interesting world. man in the world. <laughs> <laughs> stay, stay thirsty, my coaches. So what about you, Coach Philly? What's your, what's your favorite beer when you go down to, you know, Cancun, Cabo? You know, what, 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 where do you You know, um, I, 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 I agree with my, my man Hans and uh, love the, the Mexican beers. I'm going to say Pacifico. Oh, Pacifico. Pacifico. Yeah. Good job. With, yes. with, uh, with a, a little bit of, of uh, tahine. Around the rim and a line. Ooh, brilliant! Like yeah, I, he knows. Suddenly, he knows. suddenly, I'm on the beach. These guys are great. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. All right, 
What's your favorite band? Who, who is your favorite band? Now, I'm sure you listen to, you know, like you, if you're, when you're playing Big John, you know, there's got to be something on this. He say, all right, Hans, whatever you want to listen to. What do you listen to? You guys, I go Chris Stapleton. I, I like country well, a lot. Country, yeah. yeah. I'm not, I don't, yeah. And I, a lot of people, you know, go rock or something strong, ACDC, yeah. but I go chill. I like country. I go Chris Stapleton nowadays. That yeah. guy is great lyricist, too. He's remarkable. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. I, th- I thought he would have said, you know, something different. I would have not, uh, not, th- not yeah. thought that. All no. right. If you, uh, so, so here's a, here's another deep thinking question right here. So, if you're in a band, if Hans is in a mm. band, and you might have been in a band, I, I don't know. Uh, lead singer, lead guitarist, drummer, keyboards, bass guitarist, Glockenspiel player like me. I, I'm a Glockenspiel <laughs> player. You, have you ever heard lead of lead guitar? Lead guitar. Uh, lead guitar, baby. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. lefty yeah. like Hendrix and Cobain. Yeah. Or Paul McCartney. You know what? I, I go righty. Oh, I, I you do? I do a lot of things righty. I write with my right. I throw with my right. Oh. I, uh, I'm one of those guys. Yeah. I'm, so, yeah. So I play tennis with my left, but but I do a lot of things with my right. Interesting. Yeah. So when Coach Philly says, let's throw some balls, do you throw left-handed or right-handed? I throw I, I throw right-handed. Even though you serve crazy. left-handed? Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Can, you serve, yeah. can you serve right-handed? I, I bet I could, yeah. I can hit an overhead right-handed pretty good, I think, yeah. You could be but like, I, I can yeah. throw left, but it's really bad. Of, of course, I'm stronger, and I can throw a little <laughs> Harder, further away, yeah. but but it's not. I, I throw right. I don't know why. Yeah. So he's so coordinated well, yeah. and talented. I mean, I love watching. Uh, that's play. why he's the most interesting man in the world. <laughs> yeah. you know? In the world. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> no, <thank you>. <laughs> <laughs> he just needs about three that's, more weeks on the beard. And that's probably why Hans and I get along so well. I'm the same way, guys. <laughs> yeah. Left-handed tennis, but everything throwing, basketball. Lefty, baseball, righty. Football, right-handed, yep. Similar. Very yeah. diverse, yeah. Uh, very diverse uh, brains where you use both sides, both you guys. All right. Uh, all right, Hans, now this would be an interesting one also, too. Your first paid job, when you're a little guy, you know, probably b- back in Mexico someday, did you have a paper yeah. route or did you, uh, you know, did you ever, did you have a job? You guys, I, I this is going to sound bad, but I never had a job ever, ever. <laughs> but now I've been teaching tennis, yeah. you know, yeah. so I've been teaching it a okay. few lessons after yeah. COVID. I've been teaching at Sea Tennis Center now and uh and now it's my job and, and uh, but that's been my first job to be honest I'm, i guess i don't know if that's lucky or unlucky or i don't know what that is but i'm kind of embarrassed to say that no, i've never had a job that's great. <laughs> i i uh <laughs> speaking for uh for people in dallas they are lucky to have you man yeah down C oh, thank you yeah. yeah thank you they've been great to me they've been awesome yeah favorite movie tv show kind of like what, what do you like to oh watch? gladiator Gladiator. Oh, really? gosh. Yeah, that's a great movie. Maximus Decimus. Yeah. Oh, God. You can watch it. Classic. Classic. How many times have yeah. you watched that? Have you watched it like 35 times? or? Oh, yeah, a lot of times. That that movie is something else, let me tell you. Can you and, can uh, you give us the line, the are you not entertained oh, line? No, I, no, I don't know the line. Yeah, I'm sure you do, AJ. I know you. <laughs> <laughs> He knows everything. All those lines. And I'm yeah, surprised you never heard yeah. of that Canadian band. Was it Headley? Have you? Yeah, yeah I, you know, I, 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 he, he got he got that one past me. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Usually I'm on it with movie, music and movies and whatever, but no. Well, I got a ticket in Headley, Texas, going about 75 <laughs> miles an hour. You know, it's up 287. There's Headley, Texas. I've been the, through there. The cop, the cop stopped him and looked at his license like, it says Craig Bell here. Are right. you sure you're okay going 75? Five, right. Usually Craig Bell's going 175. No, we're 75 into 55. <laughs> okay. This was when it was 55 miles an hour, and I couldn't go 55. <laughs> Trust me, I was not like Sammy Hagar. I can't, can't drive 55. And, and for the record, I love riding with this guy anywhere <laughs> like i don't have to get a six flags ticket I, I don't have to pay for anything so i was going i was going on a oh we lost hans there for a second oh, he's, oh, there he is back. Oh, he's, he's back I, uh i was going up got a ticket coming back got a ticket same place same oh, guy damn oh, no. like, twice the guy got me i mean i couldn't believe it headley text that's a speed trap so <laughs> anybody going up 287 on the way to amarillo watch out up there uh, do, all right. So, what else do you like to watch, Hans? Are you uh, do you like a binge, you know, watcher? You know, uh, you, you guys, I watch all the music shows. So, American Idol, The Voice, oh, The Voice, oh, really? yeah. Factor, America's Got Talent. All of those shows, I, I watch them all when I'm on the road and uh-huh. I'm bored and alone. I'm on YouTube watching every single audition. 
singing, audition, whatever, anything. I know them all. That's, uh, that's what I do for fun, I guess. You don't watch The Bachelor or The Bachelorette, do you? Do you watch no, that? no, no, okay. I don't. I don't. I don't. I was tell do you, you guys? Is no, that, I was going to tell you, you got to turn in your man card on that one. Yeah, Coach Philly, you take his man card away if he's doing that. Right? Maybe Nat no, Chat no, does. No. Maybe yeah. Nat does. Maybe, maybe Philip's wife, right? Yeah, maybe Nat does. Yeah. Maybe Philip Farmer watches that one, but I don't know. You watch? No, I'm with you, Hans. I, I, yeah, I love I love American Idol and watch all the uh, auditions. But yeah, the wife definitely she's she's got a crew that comes over every Monday and they follow that Bachelor and Bachelorette. <laughs> do, 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 so, do you and Thunder Bear go for a walk at about that time, about eight o'clock? Yes. Yeah. Or, or, or I meet Hans out and we we have a couple of and he goes and watch American Idol. <laughs> <laughs> Great timing, Coach. Even Thunder Bear has to get leave too, right? Oh, that's Thunder. right. Yeah. That's right. The old Thunder Bear. Yeah. All right. Breakfast, lunch, or dinner? What do you like to eat, Hans? Are you breakfast? Really? Breakfast. Like I a, love breakfast. I love coffee. I love, you know, having some eggs, coffee, and just relaxing and thinking about the day and what's coming ahead. It's peaceful, you know. I have a my brain, you know, never stops. So in the morning is when I can actually, it, my brain is, is a little slow. So which is when I have time to think about life. Because after the day gets started, I go insane. I can't let my brain. Yeah, I have one of those deals that never stops. <laughs> <laughs> hamster, energetic, hamster. energetic Hans, right. and little hamster in the back. So we should, I, you know, I'm not really going to play doubles with him. So let's just name the hamster in his head, Franz. Yeah, for, that, that's good. <laughs> let's just do it that way. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Franz never stops. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I know yeah. Coach Coach Philly. Now you know you better get Hans up in the morning and have those early morning workouts instead of the instead of the night nighttime workouts. Yeah, right? fuel up with the eggs and then go right. get it. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Now the this is a, this is a really revealing question. We know that the three of us. We know actually four because because Nat's driving. Yeah. Philip would be invited. Huh? AJ would be invited. I would be invited. But who are some other people you would invite to? Uh, we, let's let's put it as a uh, dinner party, not a breakfast party, because I'm I'm more of a dinner person, so I don't get up in the morning. So we're gonna have this this. Uh, you're gonna have the Hans uh, soirée party, and who would you invite? It can be anybody from. Back in history, all the way back to day one, or you know, maybe you can think of some new people. Maybe gladiators. You know, you can bring bring in some gladiators uh, to this dinner. Up, at least four people. Yeah, you know, that you would invite. Four people or one one extra. No, it could be anybody. It could be ten. Four. Yeah. No, no, we we're, we know we're invited. Invite? Yeah. Oh, I need I need I need I need to invite Federer and talk to him about how good he like. I want to ask him a lot of questions. That's for sure. Um, yep, we Federer, like him. Yeah. like him. I, I will. I would actually talk to Feder and see what he thinks about tennis and, and life. Um, who else would I talk to? Um, I don't know. I, I would probably invite my grandfather, who I never met. Oh. You know, because uh, he when I was born, he passed away already. So I want to ask him about. You know. My, how was my dad as a kid? Yeah. You know what I mean? Right, yeah. I, yeah, how was my dad as a kid? You know, because <laughs> um, I've asked that question to my, you know, my mom's parents. I've asked them that question. How was my mom as a kid? So mm. I want to know how my dad was as a kid, right? Right. <laughs> so just trying to get to know him a little bit. Um, so that's two people. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I think uh, I think of Federer really highly because the, the – tennis that he plays it's it's absurd right it's so loose so good um but that's that's about it you know uh, okay. i don't have many heroes i guess but, no, that's but, right uh, nothing yes. wrong with that yeah we we're happy yeah, we're, yeah. we're just happy to be invited that'd be a good one i want to i want to is it granddad hosh is that uh hawk now, how do you say it, phil is it hawk or hotch just say hawk it's fine hawk. we can okay. say hawk we'll say hawk yeah. Grand, granddad hawk yeah. and uh, roger fed oh. phil yep yeah, yeah, Roger Federer, yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, I guess when I played U.S. Open in 2018, uh-huh. uh, we were on the same side of the locker rooms, but, and he came a couple times and sat on the bench, but I, I was I was pretty shy. I just ran away. I'm like, his dad was there, his coach was there, and I'm like, okay, I, I can't handle it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you chicken down, huh? Come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I just, I'm like, oh, this guy probably needs his space, you know, I don't know. I just, Chickened out and just left. But 
What do you, and, uh, what are you serving? What are you serving at the dinner? Yeah, what's for dinner for? Are we having Ooh. a barbie? Abuelo Hotch we're, and Roger Federer. We're having we're having seafood. Let me tell you, oh. I'm a seafood lover. Mm. Yeah, seafood all the way. Yeah, maybe a little steak just to, you know, a little bit, but but more seafood. That's for sure. Surf uh, turf, surf and turf. Yeah. yeah, all right. Surf Mostly and turf, surf. maybe, but but yeah, I love seafood. Uh, I guess back. Home, you know, seen a lot. We're on the coast, and, yeah. and we have all the great seafood, and I grew up on that. Love it. Fresh. Yeah. Well, that's what I was going to ask you. So the next question then is, are you an East Coast person or a West Coast person? And this can even go down to Mexico. Yeah. You could, you could be an East Coaster, you know, like golf, and then into yeah. the, the uh, uh, Atlantic, or more. are you more like a Cabo, you know, Pacific kind of person? I'm a Pacific guy. Yeah, sure. West. Yeah, for sure. 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 100%. Yeah. S- uh, what about you guys? Huh? Huh? That's a that's a good question, Philip. Who would you guys yeah. invite to dinner? Let me ask you that question. Who would you invite, AJ or Craig yeah. Bell? Go. I, I I don't get to think about this much because we don't we don't usually grill each other. <laughs> right. But uh, right. but I remember once and uh, we've had some crazy great answers like uh, like MLK and Gandhi and Christ Himself. And sometimes I want to take the interesting. Uh, supporting actor and have that guy come in. So I want John the Baptist or Joshua, who was assistant to Moses. I want one of those guys. Oh, wow. Not necessarily both, but they're both. You know why I like mm-hmm. them? They're complete badasses and they're confident and crazy, amazing. But they're also they understand that something is much better that they work for. You know. So for me, those guys are terribly inspiring. Uh, I share your opinion on Roger Federer, and I think that would be an amazing guest. And um, uh, alongside him, I feel like he has so much in common with Arthur Ashe. Uh, I feel like Arthur Ashe would be a good guest, too. So that's my Mount Rushmore. Uh, uh, Joshua, uh, John the Baptist, Arthur Ashe, Roger Federer. Mm, that's How about you, CB? Wow. Well, I was thinking along that line. Pontius Pilate would be an interesting cat to be at that that dinner, just to get his take on what was going on at that time. Because yes. you know, because you know, because he he was like, "Hey, I'm not, I'm washing my hands of this thing." Yeah. Except to you all. So really, you know, so somebody like that would be an interesting guy. Now, I'm a Civil War guy, so I have to invite Bob Lee because I I, I want to ask him about Pickett's charge. This is uh, General Robert, Robert Edward Lee. Yes, Robert E. Lee, and I'm not being a racist or anything. I just would want. I'm I'm more about <laughs> about. Pickett's charge, and uh-huh. I'm just sitting there fascinated by like why? Why did you do that? Yeah. You sent ten thousand guys just you know try to go a mile across the the field, and basically every one of them just you know didn't didn't get there. So uh, I, I'm going back in history. Like I that. love it. Yeah, Philip, but, you, uh, yeah. you got to give us uh, a yeah. few more now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. and and um, you know for sure it seems like we all have it in common. So I have to tell a story, of course. Tell uh, it. Definitely, Roger Federer will be will be at that dinner, one hundred percent. And I uh, got to know him a little bit through, obviously, Brian Brothers many years. And, and when I was coaching Sam Query, we practiced with him a couple times. But I was coaching one of Hans's doubles buddies uh-huh. um, uh, years ago named Andre Begeman from Germany. And I'm actually in the locker room, but I'm kind of in the hallway um, before you exit out. And I'm just kind of got my back to the wall. I'm just kind of standing there, you know, minding my business, waiting for uh, Begeman to kind of come out and join me. And um, I kind of see, because you always notice he's got such an amazing aura, I see Roger kind of walking towards me to my right. And and so, but I don't want to look at, you know, kind of, I, I think I maybe I'd said hi before, so I didn't want to, you know, stare at him again yeah. or whatever. But <laughs> so anyways, he's walking by and kind of as I, I bring my head up to, you know, just kind of look, he goes, wah, and he scares me. <laughs> And like I literally, I literally like jump up, and he he just keeps, but he keeps walking, and I'm like, oh my gosh, he's just literally gonna keep walking. He takes ten steps and looks back right before he opens the door, and just gives this smile and winks and walks off. Oh, he's the <laughs> and, man. And he like that's how he is. Like I, I, you know, he's he's so funny. He's he's one of the most humble, nicest guys on the tour, along with Nadal and 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 the Bryan brothers. And of course, my man Hans. They're all just, they have that amazing quality. They're all they're all so genuine, very very humble. They want to hear about what you're doing, how you're doing, how you've been playing. 
um, how your career is going. I mean, look, look at the question. Hans asked it back to you guys, yeah. right? <laughs> and that, that, that's, that's how the dinner would go. He'd be asking, you know, Craig and AJ and myself and, and, and Hans's grandfather and Hans, seriously, he'd be asking about our lives. He'd be joking. He's a big prankster, big joker, likes to laugh. And, um, that's what makes him just so, you know, down to earth is so special. And so, um, anyways, funny story there, but yeah, he'd be, he'd be there for sure. And, um, man, who did I say the other day when I was on, uh, at the net, I think I mentioned, uh, Michael Jordan. Yep. Um, yep. Oh, wow. Yeah. And, um, oh man, I probably had an artist in there cause I love music. And so, um, what about the other MJ, man, Michael, Michael Jackson, would you go with Michael maybe, Jackson, Michael Jordan? Yeah, oh, that would um, be, that would be, yeah. Yeah. Michael Jackson or, um, you know, it was it was really bummed I didn't get to see him live or Prince. Prince mm. might be very, very, and because Prince is a very intelligent um, businessman, obviously musician, uh, artist. He, he did all the lyrics, and um, so he he would be, I think, rather interesting as well. But man, great, great question. Yeah, great question. It's fun. I thought you were going to say you won ten thousand dollars off of Federer like you did on Agassi. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, that was the yeah, best. No, I, 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 That's... I, I, uh, don't That's think still. he was going to go there. I think he might have even heard about my bet, so I think he knows. Not oh, he knows. Me. He knows. Yeah. Hey, watch that farmer guy. He he's taller yeah. than what he looks like. He, he is tall. He, he can he can. You know, like I'm taller than AJ now. See all the yeah, sudden. That's right. I used that's to be. Right. I used that's to be right. shorter, but now I'm taller. And uh, right. I, I can get up there. <laughs> <laughs> that's still. That's a hilarious story. I uh, mean, that's so. Yeah, good. I'm sure you've heard that, Hans, haven't you? That how you won that money off of Andre. I never know. Oh, never tell, oh please tell it. Tell it really fast, Phil. This is too good. This is funny, Hans. It's the fun, one of because, the because because Andre yeah. is. You, you mentioned yeah. attention to detail. Yes, Andre is uh, hyper aware of everybody's height, dimensions, whatever. Right? Yeah. Tell tell the story really quick. Yeah. Come on. Okay, Phil, I'll you give you. Tell. I'll give you a quick version. Yeah. So we're at Davis Cup, Hans, two thousand five, and Carson and Andre decided to come back and play that year, and so it's Andre Roddick and the Bryans. And um, we are uh, we unfortunately lost the tie to uh, Anchich and Lubacic, who, who just were too good that weekend. And it was Bob Mike's first first loss uh, mm-hmm. in Davis Cup in a few years, uh, first loss ever. Um, anyways, we're at breakfast and we're talking about kind of Andy Roddick's live arm, and we he goes, yeah, and you know Wayne Arthur's is kind of similar too, you know, big left. He's got a massive serve and he's not that tall. And I said, what do you mean he's not that tall? I'm like, he's taller than I am. And he's like, no, he's not. He's like, I'm like, yeah, I'm around him every week on the doubles tour. He's like, I've been playing against that guy for years. And I was like, there's no way. And he's like, yeah, you want to bet? And I said, yeah. I said, I'll, I'll bet you. I said, you know, I'm 6'3", and he's taller than I am. He said, you're not, you're barely 6 you're not. No, I said, I'm sorry, I'm 6'4", uh-huh. and he's taller than I am. He said, you're not even barely 6'3". What are you talking about? <laughs> I said, okay, now now, now you're, you're, you must be drunk or something. <laughs> So he, he goes, well, let's go get a measuring tape. He goes, you're six, two and three quarters. So they yeah. go get a measuring tape. I get barefoot, get against the wall. I'm six, two and three quarters. Unbelievable. Right, on the, right on the nose. So now I'm like, oh man. And he's like, you still want to bet? And I go, yeah, you may have, you may have, you know, got that right, but there's no way that I'm taller than him. And he said, well, what do you want to bet? And he goes, I'll give you a hundred to one odds. I said, you got it. I said, I'll bet you a hundred bucks. And he goes, you know, when I win, I will take your money. And he goes, I'm superstitious, <laughs> so I don't like $100 bills. You better pay me either in 10s, 20s, or 50s. And I said, that's fine, Andre. But I said, when I win my bet, you better pay the $1,000. When you write the check for $1,000, you better make sure that check is, is uh, written to fill up with one L and not two. <laughs> and Andy Roddick bumps me on the, on the arm and says, you idiot, if you win, it's 10 grand. A hundred <laughs> times said, oh. 100. Yeah. So anyways, the next week is Indian Wells. And, and that was where all the players and coaches had to attend a mandatory meeting. So by that time, everybody's coming from Davis Cup. They've heard about it. I mean, literally 120 players. They've heard about this exact exactly. bet. Oh, the, everybody's hearing about it. The, tour, like, the tour is buzzing. They right? are, they're going nuts. And here, here you've got Bob and Mike that are making millions and millions of dollars a year. They're like two kids in a candy store. So excited. And uh, for me to win potentially 10 grand. And I remember Darren Cahill said, hey, you're probably going to lose, huh. but you had to take the bet. And you take the money because he will take your 100. So, so Killer was in on it also, too, huh? So Killer knew about so, it? Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So we get, we, get to, we get to Indian Wells. Uh-huh. 
We get to Indian Wells and everybody's heard about it. We get to the player <laughs> meeting. It's in a big tent. Everybody gathers around and here comes Andre. And he said, I'm ready. Let's do this. Wayne's right behind me. But Wayne's coming in. He, he kind of had heard about it, but you know, he's, he's a pretty kind of casual kind of loose guy. But so he walks up, <laughs> Andre said, let's get it going. So literally hundred players and coaches make a big circle and oh, gather no. around me, me and Wayne. <laughs> Andre makes us take off her shoes. He says, get back to back and stand normal. Uh-huh. <laughs> and, and so again, to, to win the bet, uh-huh. I need Wayne to be taller than me, but for Andre to win the bet, we just have to be the same or I'm taller. Right. So we get back to back. We're standing there. There's a silence, man. Everybody, it's close. And all of a sudden, I hear Andre, <laughs> I hear Andre's voice go. I'll never forget it. Andre goes, "Shit." <laughs> <laughs> and Bob and Mike, I look over, and they're they're jumping up and down like a couple of you know little, middle school, high school, whatever kids. Kid. Oh. And they're like, Phil, you won, you won, you won. <laughs> <laughs> so I won the I won the bet. And, um, it was, he it paid was really, you? and he did pay me. I tried to give it back, and man, he he was stubborn. He would not take that money back. He he literally slapped ten thousand dollars cash uh, the wow. next day by the players' uh, practice desk, and it was uh it, it was uh it was that unbelievable was uh, um, <laughs> unbelievable story and i can't believe i hadn't told you that huh? yeah. oh, so no, fun. no, that's funny that's oh. so good oh, great story. 10 grand off of andre man that is so oh, beautiful yeah and yeah. that's awesome I, I love that you got yeah. to tell that story yeah. on the air with yeah. your boy hans right yeah. here oh that's yeah so funny Oh, uh, I mean, that's, that's one of my favorite stories of all time. I've, I've heard you say a couple of times, and I just like, I just think it's funny. <laughs> I can just see it like a prize fight at Indian Wells. Everybody are just gathering around. Oh, you yeah. see this big tent. It's, it's just like, you know, Tyson, you know, fighting, you know, whomever. And then all of a sudden, you know, it's uh, yeah. you know, bedlam breaks loose and shit. Uh, yeah, that's story that will be told for years, for sure. Oh, Forever. That right. is too funny. I mean, I can't wait. If we ever come in contact with Andre, we got oh, yeah. to say, hey, what's your take on that Philip Farmer, you know, <laughs> Wayne Arthur? Oh, uh, he <laughs> <my money. laughs> yeah. uh, he'll, he'll, he'll remember. Oh, oh yeah. He can't forget that. Uh, that guy remembers every little thing. He'll definitely remember oh, this. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> all right, Hans, mountains yeah. or beach? you like the mountains or do you like the beach? Mountains. Mountains, like uh, yeah. summertime mountains or wintertime mountains. Wintertime, winter ah. snowy. So, which yeah. which mountains are you, are you a Colorado kind of guy? Montana, Mexico? Because there's Me- I think it snows down in Mexico a little bit. You know, mountains. you know what happens. I grew up in the by the beach, like really, really hot Mexico yeah. weather. You know, so I think now at this stage in life, I enjoy the snow, the mountains, and all of that. And mm. in Canada it was great seeing the snow and. Now it gets old, right? So um, it's good for a little bit. But I, if if I if I if I will make a trip, I'll go to the mountains. That's for sure. I mean, at this stage in life, yeah. yeah. Is Coach Phil with you, or does he not get to go on the trip? No, Coach likes Cabo. <laughs> Mark that's likes right. Cabo. Hey. All right. Yeah. See, that's hey, a player known as. Co- yeah. That's a player knowing his coach right there. That's that's right. <laughs> on, on beach. That's right. Uh, but I'll join him, so it's okay. I'll, I'll yeah. make another trip to go to Cabo with Philip. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Divert that path. Yeah. I, f- I have a feeling I have this. I've got this figured out. Sunrise or sunset? Sunrise. I figured morning, that. Morning. When person. he said he, he, he liked breakfast, breakfast. I, I had yeah. figured that out. Favorite season? Are you a summer, spring, fall, winter? What do you like? Fall. 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 Hundred percent. Interesting. I like the change of the trees and when it gets a little chilly and you can have the coffee by the fire. Yeah. I like that. That kind of stuff. So like the Canadian yeah. fall where the leaves change, you know, you see. Oh all the- yeah. Love that. Love that. <laughs> the trees are orange and red and yellow and all the colors. Yeah. What's your favorite holiday? Christmas. Christmas, yeah. yeah. Are you a yeah. uh, warm weather Christmas kind of person or a traditional cold weather like us up here in the in the northern winter, Amazon. cold, winter. cold weather. Yeah, dreaming of the white Nothing Christmas. Nothing like a snowy Christmas. Yeah. Uh, what do you like to do in your spare time? Go out, hang out with my friends, go to dinner, talk, have fun, get a dos equis with the most in- interested men in the world. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, down there on Lower Greenville with AJ and yeah, his buddies on th- Thursday night. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. yeah, that's that's fun. Yeah. 
I like that. Yeah, so. we'll get back on a Thursday night soon. Yeah, I, I yeah. Hear, they don't ever invite me. We are, need are they, to. Have they invited you, Coach? <laughs> Philly, have you ever been invited on this Lower Greenville, you know, journey down there with AJ and them? Um, I haven't, but I, I I have a sneaky suspicion you and I are going to be invited on the next. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> all of a sudden we're going to get a text. Here. Hey, come on yeah. down. <laughs> there is no question, yeah. boys. Yeah, and, and, and I'm sure we'll I'm sure we'll be in and we'll join them too. That'll be right. fun. all the time. Yep. All right. Uh, let's see. Indoor tennis or outdoor tennis? We're going to shift to the third part of the third set. Indoor tennis Ooh. or outdoor tennis? You know what? It's more fun playing outdoors, but I'm I, I think I'm a much better as an indoor player i mm. like playing indoors i love playing indoors it fits my game really well but it's more enjoyable playing outside mm. <laughs> so, like outdoor do you like clay outdoors or more like hard courts behind us? hard 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 yeah oh really? but I, I do well in indoors yeah i do well in indoors like the courts that you have behind you yeah i like those yeah so who has a big better serve coach philly or john isner <laughs> Phillips got him. <laughs> Ten right. miles. Slides Ten that, miles per hour. He slides that little lefty out into the ad court. Yeah, you know, right there, yeah, you yeah. Can't yep. return. It's unreturnable, yep. right? His is so yeah. fast people can't see it. Mine's so slow they can't return it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, most embarrassing moment in tennis. Now, we, we'll ask Coach Philly Ooh. this also, too, because we didn't ask you this last time. So this is Ooh. one I've – so is there a most embarrassing moment? I've got a couple in my life, but I won't share those. But I want to ask you guys. Most Ooh, I think I got one. Okay, shoot. I got. See, these questions are great. I, I've never <laughs> thought about the questions you you guys are asking. Hey, we're not you a know, bunch of pretty faces. Come that, on. Yeah. No, I like it. I like yeah. it. I like it. Um, I don't think I've had a bad one, but I think one of the most embarrassing ones was playing singles. I was still playing singles, and we I was playing. I got a wild card into uh, ATP. 250 in Cabo and I'm playing stadium, big court and, and it's so windy and I'm playing Matthew Ebden. Australian. So, um, yeah. So I'm, I'm getting my, my ass handed. He's beating me pretty good, you know, and, and it's so windy. I can barely keep the ball in the court. And, oh. and next thing you know, I, I'm trying to pick it up and I'm feeling better. And I serve massive serve. And then he frames it or something. And it's so windy, and I'm trying to get out of the ball. I'm, like, way behind the baseline. Uh-huh. But the ball hasn't bounced still up in the air, and I'm trying to get out of the ball, and it hits me. <laughs> and I'm so far behind. I lost a point. I was going to, you know, I'm like, why? And everybody's laughing. I'm like, okay, well, that, but that's not, I mean, that's just tennis. But to me, that was embarrassing because it was a big court. But I've never had a, a, a bad one. I'm sure Phillip's got some funny ones. So I want to hear him. Yeah, yeah, I've got I've got one uh, that I'll tell that's that's pretty good. I'm a freshman at uh, OU playing, and with um, the Big Eight back then, it was the Big Eight conference. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, you remember that, boys? Mm-hmm. Oh, sure, for sure. And um, and so we're uh, the Big Eight that year was held in Kansas City, and so um, we're at the uh, airport in Oklahoma City, about ready to fly out, and. Um, we're, it's a Southwest flight. I'll never forget it. And at the gate, there was two different flights. So, and back then they used to do it that way, like this one, and it leaves at this time. And there's another one that'll leave at another time. And they were pretty close on the times and one was an hour apart. So I said, okay, well, I got time to go call my mom. She and my dad were going to join me for my first big eight conference tournament. And so I, back then it was no cell phone. So I went to use the pay phone to call my mom and we're chatting and laughing and I'm so excited for you to come watch me play. And so I finally hang up and kind of go, and where is everybody? And I'm like, oh, man, did the, the flight didn't leave, did it? So I start panicking. I'm running with my, my racket bag, and I go to the end, go down the tunnel, and, and the plane's backing up. Oh, oh, no. And I am devastated. I'm like, <laughs> oh, this, this, this freshman so excited to go to my first conference tournament. And I'm just like, oh, the coach is going to, they're going to kill me. The guys are going to make fun of me. Here's the plane backing up. I'm literally, I'm literally waving to the pilots. Like any way you can come back, <laughs> come back, come back, come back. The, uh, the late, the, the, the sweet lady at the gate knew I was just devastated. She helped me get on a flight, ended up joining them, you know, hours and hours later. And, uh, I think I was staying with the assistant coach that year. And I walk in, I said, I guess I'm not playing tomorrow. Am I? And he said, actually, you're fine. Uh, he said, you're, you're, you're going to play. We're going to make fun of you all week. At the 
<laughs> but uh, yeah, but you're gonna play, and it's an honest mistake. And uh, but I was so embarrassed, and now it's like, yeah, just make sure Philip doesn't miss the flight again. <laughs> oh god! Someone better, better, better go check on Philip. He's he's he never. Oh yeah. Oh man, that's that's a funny story. You're at Will Rogers International Airport in, in Oklahoma, Oklahoma City. City. Yeah, and, and there's nothing international about the <laughs> name of. Yeah, I'm always wondering that's, why did they name that Will Rogers International? Because there's no. I know. <laughs> I know. Hey, hey Philip, have you did you ever miss a flight as a coach with with a player? Or Ooh, no? good question. Mm. Like um, something like that. Where you know sometimes the player and the they just hang out separately and you just miss it or something. No, I'm trying to think um, if I ever missed one. No, um, like by accident, you know, like you're there and you just miss it. No, 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 no. I don't think so. Um, I know Bob and Mike and I. Um, this is a little bit different, but. Um, we were in Europe somewhere and it was touch and go on the landing. It was, it was scary, like bouncing everywhere. And I remember thinking we were getting close to landing. I'm like, gosh, just get me on that runway <laughs> on, the, on the landing. And, um, we touched down, you know, you can obviously feel it and then you, you hear it, feel it, everything. Then all of a sudden we're taken off again. Oh, oh no. And we take off and, and we're back in the air and, I don't know what if it was a wheel or something, maybe the back wheels or something, but we we end up having to fly around until they they release down. But um, that obviously wasn't embarrassing. That was more scary. <laughs> yeah. um, right. We were all we were all scared, but um, no, I don't. I don't. I, I think we were all. Uh, you know, once I got to that stage as a professional coach, I think we were. <laughs> I think I was a lot more disciplined and, and organized. <laughs> you weren't calling your no, mom and dad. It, it happens as, as a action. Like you, sometimes you, you just you know go check the phone or something, and it's gone. Like you said. Oh yeah. Anyway. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. All right, Hans. Your favorite tournament. What's yeah. your favorite tournament? Acapulco. Oh really? Interesting. Yeah. At the Princess, yeah. huh? Acapulco Princess. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's my favorite tournament. Yeah, it's a great tournament. So, what a beautiful yeah. place! Oh, venue, I, I, remember, awesome. I, I remember Philip telling us about it. How the water's right there, the stadium's right there, the hotel's right here, huh? Oh man, yeah, they have it all, and it's a party all week. It's crazy. All the Mexican people, everybody. It, there's something going on every day. So every awesome. Night. Yeah, they're- they're, they take a lot of pride in that tournament, guys. I mean, it's just, as Han said, it's just, there's so much, it's almost like a mini U.S. Open. Um, they treat it like their own Grand Slam, and yeah. it's, it's really cool. Yeah. Great crowds and, and, and just the it's electric, kind of like New York, um, and it's just a, a ton of energy. It's real, really cool. Yeah. That, sounds, that sounds like I've I've been by. The, we actually took our honeymoon in Acapulco. You and Cindy, how mm-hmm. about yeah, that? Yeah, we, I remember going by the Princess. Yeah. We did. That, that was like eighty. Three I had to sit there a long time ago. It's probably before the <laughs> tournament. But I just remember it, going by and thinking, "Wow, that's a, that's the Acapulco Princess." So I've actually, yeah, you know, ridden past it. We didn't stop. That wasn't where we were staying. Yeah, we were staying. The more, cool thing about the yeah. tournament is matches don't start till like six p.m. because it, it's so hot. So they wait till you know the sun's coming down yeah. so they can start the matches. So you have all day till six p.m. If you're an spectator, right? spectator yeah you, you you go hang out with your family in the morning you by the pool with your kids or whatever that is and then next thing you know hey it's tennis at night and you go watch tennis till midnight or whatever right amazing but yeah that's the that's what makes it cool that you you just do it after six and then, then people get in probably go to sleep at what three or four in the morning or something oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. i Sorry. mean there were a few times where my dad will come with me to the tournament and he'll stay up watching matches till 2 a.m. Like, Dad, what are you doing? Oh, I was watching this. I'm already asleep because I got to practice the next day, you know. Yeah. And he just loves it. Stays out till 2 a.m. watching. And, you know, as a tennis fan, is awesome. Great yeah. tournament. Yeah. Do you like to watch tennis on TV? Um, you know what? I, I never uh, do or never did. Now uh, as I became uh, this double specialist, I guess. I've been a student of the game. I've been watching a lot, a lot of tennis, which back then I was not. Now I'm, I'm, I'm watching a lot of film. I'm watching a lot of matches and, and kind of put it in my head and thinking about 
strategy and all of that, which back then I never did. Now I'm a much better student of the game, I guess. So, so lately I have. Yeah. So an interesting question to follow up. We've had two two analytic uh, experts, Craig O'Shaughnessy and Warren Pretorius, on our podcast. Do you all subscribe yeah. to those types of analytics, uh, Coach Phil and Hans? Do you all use you know data, you know tag match tagging that type of information? You know when you all go out and practice and play. You know, I, I'm going to answer uh, for my part, and then I'll let Philip mm-hmm. answer his part. But to be honest, um, nowadays on the Challenger Tour, which is where I play the most, um, all the matches uh, are filmed, right? They're, they're saved in a, in a website, on a website. And I, if I'm playing AJ and Craig Bell, I can go back and look you guys up on your previous matches, and, 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 and I study that pretty good, mm-hmm. and I take notes to not, like, oh, this guy missed a return over here. Deuce Boyne, who took it, or was it a forehand? They did I formation. I I write down the, the stats. That's for sure before a match, and and uh, and, and I feel like in doubles is is very strategic because it's boom 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 boom. It's done, right? Yeah. You only have 50 minutes, and then you're in and you're out. And, and so I think uh, I come up with a better plan. Yeah. Um. I've I've listened to the brain game. I've been to one of those presentations with uh, O'Shaughnessy. Craig, and, uh, yeah. I like it. I like it a lot. I think nowadays you, you got to have stuff like that. You got to have information. You know, otherwise, uh, I think you're 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 a little behind. That's for sure. What do you think, Coach Philly? <laughs> do you like that? Yeah, I, I, I agree. You know, I kind of um, got into it probably five five, six years ago as well. I think it's um, becoming a really important part to the game. I'm big on watching film and um, I've always been big on the film, studying the film. And then, and now with the analytics, you know, mm. finding some, some uh, percentages, some themes, some tendencies. Absolutely. Craig O'Shaughnessy is a good friend of mine. And um, we typically uh, in Australia or at the U S open kind of spend a lot of time chatting about tennis and, and different types of, uh, analytics with, within the game. And, and, um, the one that I always love, I'll just give you an example is, is the one where the career winning percentage of Federer, Nadal and Djokovic. Okay. Of career total points. One, if you took their career winning percentage, I call it the old 55 versus 45, it's 55%. And what a lot of people looked at as I, and I speak on this, um, a lot of people look at the 55 and what I did is I always like, you know, looking at things a little bit different and, and Hans will be able to attest to this with my coaching. I'm kind of like a Phil Jackson or a Popovich where I just, I, I kind of like to go a little deeper and a little different um, direction with it. I look at, at the other side of it. I looked at it. How amazing are these three guys and how consistent knowing that they lose 45% of their points every match they play. That's a lot of points to lose and maintain your sanity, your emotional control, your confidence, especially. And so, um, yeah, so things like that, I like to, I like to get the analytics and then let my crazy brain work on it and find some really uh, cool kind of messages that I can share to Hans or Sam or Bob or Mike or whatever. And in yeah. fact, I did share, the, you know, some of those with Bob and Mike when I, when I got the job back in 2017, we kind of looked at tendencies versus two up versus one up, one back because doubles as Hans will be able to let you know, uh, or attest to, um, you know, the past four or five, six years, the, there's a lot more players staying back, mm-hmm. uh, two back serving and staying back and just kind of grinding. And, and they've become pretty successful at it. Like Mark Lopez and Feliciano Lopez, for example, um, or granolas and Lopez. Yep. And so, um, you know, I, I had to find, you know, ways and analytics to prove and show them that no, 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 the advantage is still at the net. And Hans hears me talk about a lot of that in our training. We still got to sneak in. We still got to get to the net and, and create and form that wall at the net. The players that, 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 that are up at the net and that, that live up at the net are going to win more often. And so we got to trust that philosophy, and and I still think that to this day. And, and Hans is, does a great job at that, uh, from you know hitting the lob over to rushing in, um, to returning on big points, return, rip, and come in, um, to just you know poaching and being more active in the middle. So I, I, again, I, I'll take the net player any day, 
um, and doubles over the baseline kind of uh, grinder or ripper. Good That's answer. Tough, wow. yes. Yeah. Would, do, you, do you think uh, Rafa ought to use some analytics? Rafa, do you, would you use the analytics? Well, I uh, enjoy uh, all kinds of numbers, no? I enjoy to, to try to play against Hans. Uh, uh, Philip uh, should uh, should uh, translate all these numbers for me, no? Yeah. Uh, always improving, no? This is how I live. And that's how you won Barcelona today over Pass, right? Is that correct? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they were both down yes. match point at they were. some point. Did you all today. see that match? You know, that was unbelievable watching. This is Rafa with uh, Stefanos yeah. today. Did you all see that? Oh, no. Um, no, I, I was traveling. So what happened? Um, Stefanos Rafa. was up a break in the first and second sets. Rafa came back uh, and won the first and had a match point, I believe, in, in the, the second. second. He had match point. Stefano saved it and came back and won the second set 7-6, oh, I my believe. Goodness. And then they went to a, a third set, which Rafa took 7-5. Oh, yeah. unbelievable. Yeah. You know what's crazy to me? I was yeah. watching. I was on Instagram just watching the, the last point, the match point. Uh-huh. What's crazy to me, how Rafa just celebrates. Like, he just won his first. ATP title and just so intent. It, it like meant, he celebrates yeah. like it's, yeah. you know, his first French Open. Yeah, oh it, it meant guy. so much to him to win Barcelona. Yeah, I think it was, it's crazy. Isn't that me. like his twelfth Barcelona title? Twelve, eleventh, or eleven, twelve. 12, 12 yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. There's yeah. some yeah. incredible. And he stat. celebrates like it's the first one. Come on, yeah. man, you've gotten twelve. Just, <laughs> hey, just relax. Yeah. Give it up. <laughs> Let somebody yeah. else win, for God's sake. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's and Bob and Mike were really similar. It, it's just so important to them, and that competitive, just inner drive, that mm. it factor of just, you know. Uh, not wanting to, not wanting to fail, just wanting to, wanting to, you know, leave that trip as the winner. And, and, and it's, it's, Hans is right. It's incredible. There's, it's definitely something special and it's, you know, of course everybody wants to win. Hans wants to win. We all want to win. Of course. Um, but, but it's, it's, it's really cool to see that they still love it. And that means that much to them to this day. I mean, it's unbelievable. Yeah, no, it was, it was oh, a, unbelievable. Um, unbelievable. I believe that's unbelievable. how you pronounce it, right? Unbelievable. That's right. No, that's right. That's unbelievable, no? No, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> and then Joker loses, I guess, uh, at uh, Zagreb. Ka- Karatsev yeah. in Karatsev. Belgrade. Yes. And then Karatsev lost, I believe it was 7 6 in the third to Berrettini in the yeah. final today. Yeah. So, Novak, were you waiting for the French Open? Is that why you lost the match? Uh, on the court as well as off the court, I uh, I prepared and trained very hard. My my brother Jolie was the tournament director. Uh, needless to say, I spent most of my time helping him, uh, which uh, mm. may, it might have have taken away from my performance. Yep. Uh, I do want to talk about doubles, though. <laughs> do you know uh, Hans? Your singles and doubles, and now more doubles. Ash Barty won Stuttgart in yes. singles today in three sets. Yeah. Ash Barty won doubles today with Jen Brady in three sets today. Wow, that's, that's pretty incredible. Mm-hmm. That yeah. is an effort. That's my girl. That's my favorite. And it's yeah, wartime. The, game, the, I mean, the game's become week. so physical. Yeah. And, you know, so much demand on the body. That That is, these days, that is a tremendous effort. I mean, Ash Barty yeah. looks like she's not doing anything. I don't know how she she's wins. She's the Federer of the women's tour. I, I can't figure out how she wins, but <laughs> yep. she's always winning. And it just, yeah, I, I write her off. You know, she hadn't played basically in a year, and she's come back and really taken over her throne again. Basically, uh, I, you know, it'd, it'd be good, interesting to see her play Osaka right now. Oh, I, think I would love that. That'd be a really interesting matchup. It's going to be fun at the French Open, yeah. anyway. Yep. Uh, and but, look out, hey, look out, guys, for yep. that Italian player. And Hans, help me with the name. Um, the young kid, one-handed backhand, and oh, he is fun, fun Lor- to watch. Lorenzo Musetti. Musetti. There it is. Wow, yeah, look out for that cat. Beautiful mover. Um, yeah. yeah, and he strikes that one-hander. Hans, have you encountered that kid in dubs or singles at all? No, no, no. Mm-hmm. I, I've never uh, never played him or seen him, nothing. But uh, Sinner. Oh, oh yeah. I Sinner. I, ha- I had this conversation with um, – with John Isner the other uh-huh. day, and I told him, look, like, Sinner is so good. He goes, yeah, it's so good, but look out, because this guy, Alcaraz or whatever. Spanish Carlos, guy, yes. He goes, he's going to be top ten. I'm like, come on, man. It's, he goes, it's he's going to be top ten. I'm like, I've never watched him play, but it, apparently this Spanish guy is so good as well. I don't know. Hmm. Okay. He's like you, Hans. He's average height, um, 
ATP points at the age of 17 and a massive future, and he crushes the two-handed backhand and the slice and everything. He's, he's going to be something special. I, I hope we have those rivalries. Carlos, Yannick, Lorenzo Musetti, like Philip is yep. picking. It's, it's going to be a good future in this game, even when the, the three that we all talk about are going to retire at some point. Sure, no. eventually. Maybe, maybe you not. Know, go ahead, Craig. Sorry. No, I just said maybe not. Maybe they won't. <laughs> maybe they'll just keep playing. Uh, I don't know, but to be honest, uh, there's so many kids, just like the ones we just mentioned, yeah. and they're unseated. They're not seated. We're talking, you know, those Kachanov, uh, Rublev, well, now he's seated. Yeah. But you can draw any of these guys first round, and you're out. Unreal. You know, any of these kids. There's like 20 of them around there. They're so good. Oh, you know, yeah, that's, Chapovalov, that's so true. Yep. Felix. Felix, um, Chapo, yeah. And oh I'll, tell you the, I'll tell you the uh, the young American that you watch. Uh, he'll be taken after his dad. Sebastian. And, and Sebastian Corda. Yeah. And what I love about him, I think he's got a great tennis physique for the game, oh, where yeah. the game's going. But I love his vision and his tennis IQ, his ability to sneak in, volley short when he's playing a really good passer that maybe a Spanish guy that's sitting back. Um He's got great vision of the court, mm. um, the angles. The the he's he's one to watch for for sure. And obviously, uh, an athletic family with two what is it one or two sisters that are on the golf tour, uh, mm-hmm. killing it. Yeah. Um, obviously, athletic mom and dad, and and uh, it's in the DNA. So look out for that 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 guy. Not only is a great player, but and great mind. But man, his vision and and feel for the game and that transition area which I, I, I think it's coming back to that. You see Federer coming in more. You see Nadal, who is very underrated. Uh, he is, I mean, phenomenal at the net. Yeah. Phenomenal volleyer. He, he had some shots that they showed some. If you go back and, and watch watch the, the match, uh, Arias, and uh, the, the, in between one of the changeovers in the second set, they were showing some of those crazy shots that Rafa hits. And he, he had a shot that, yeah, I mean, you thought he was off the court, and his left hand goes out, and it flicks a, a volley winner back to the, other, to the open court after about – it Amazing. was unbelievable. That, that dude, if what, just, just what you were saying, is, is uh, an under, underrated volleyer, uh, I, I believe. Yep. In, in, yep. Well, question for three of you guys. Anything. Now I'm going to question you guys. I got one question. <laughs> um, no questions. So I, I've been teaching tennis, you yeah. know, lately. I've been teaching a lot of kids at see tennis. Mm-hmm. And um, and now I'm watching these guys, like oh, we're talking about these 17-year-olds, 16-year-olds that are really, really good. Do you think you have to be born with some type of talent or do you think you can actually make it with no what, – what are your thoughts on that, the genes and all of that? Is that a big role? Does that play a big role or or you think – you can always outwork and, and make it happen. What do you think? That's a Me? very deep, tough question. What do you think? Craig, that, you start. So, yeah. yeah. I'll, I'll say one. Now that I've been coaching, I'm like, oh, gosh. To me, this is simple, but to something it's not. You know what I mean? So, what do you what do you guys right. think about that? I, th- I think it's work and a little luck. Yeah, I think you've got to you've got to outwork. The harder you work, the luckier you get. Uh, that's just me. Um, I think you do have to have some talent, though. I, you know, for me, I I started when I was. 14 basically but i had a huge sports background yeah. playing uh, football baseball basketball from basically the time i could walk all the way up till till then and then i started playing tennis but i played a massive amount of tennis at that point because i started working at a club and then i just literally was it was a, a club rat like a gym rat and he yeah. he played and worked at the wood lake racket club which is the caddy shack of oklahoma yes, city it, it is it was and it is <laughs> and it always shall be and let me t- tell you T- tennis I, version I, i've got some funny <laughs> stories about that place and I, I, names are protected to yeah. save the to save the guilty i mean they are definitely guilty oh he, he moved again Look philip at yeah he hey around. philip yeah. Oh, we want you to answer that yeah. question that's a good what question do you think? Come on. yeah do you, you have to be born with something or no what do you think, do you, think? you know i i think if we're talking about uh at, at hans's level the yeah. elite top 200 in the world top 100 in the world i think you do i i i think as craig uh mentioned um i i think it's almost like you know you're making a batch of cookies and there's a recipe you, you got to work hard mm-hmm. you got to kind of have um you know the mental toughness and the emotional control and things like that and th- there are things you can work on and some things you work can work on with speed and, and strength and agility but sometimes you know there's obviously gifts of quickness and and footwork like Djokovic has but 
Yeah, I, I think part of that that the ingredients is you just there's that it factor that 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 talent that you're born with, um, and and so I, I think that is part of the recipe, especially for for the for the elite level. I think you have to have something that something in there for sure. Yep. Hans, that's think? great. Um, thanks for asking. I can't put it any better than these two guys, but I do want to say there is the nice guy part of my brain that wants to say, hey, man, it's both. And our job at, as coaches is to nurture that side, um, mm-hmm. whether a kid is talented or not. But the the realist and the pragmatist fully agrees with Philip that um, – uh, hard work definitely beats talent that doesn't work hard, but who gets to the top 100 and 200 like you, Hans, is a hard worker who happens to have a lot of feel yeah. and started at three and a half like yeah. Hans Ott, you yeah. know? That's that's a part of it. And then the third part of my brain is the, as Hans alluded to earlier, the entertainment side, and I can only think of Randolph and Mortimer Duke, Duke. in mm-hmm. Trading Places yep. where the, the entire movie for two hours is about nature versus nurture, nurture. Right. and uh, we all know how that ends right. and uh, uh you know right. the, basically uh it's it's a complex equation and yep. we just have to uh have to kind of work with the the player who's not horribly athletic and not do our best to not mess up the guy who is incredibly intuitive and feel and uh, like a sebastian corda like a hans hodge who has those gifts mm-hmm. up right, at the net right. you know yeah Yep. Mortimer, we're back. We're back. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah. I love we're that. Back. We're back. Yeah. No, I think, yeah, there's a lot. I mean, for me, yeah. If, if you're not, if you're expecting to be on TV behind or like Hans, you know, you, you got to start when you're three or four or five, somewhere in that neighborhood. I know I got too late to start to, to jump on mm-hmm. that, that wagon. I mean, I didn't do bad for myself, mm-hmm. but I think to play at that level, that elite level, like Hans plays around and yeah. with those guys, that's that's a skill that that uh, you learn really, really early. Uh, and it tends to such a difficult sport to play. Maybe the most difficult, I think, probably batting, you know, hitting a baseball. Oh, that's, yeah. that's pretty darn tough yeah. also, too. Uh, you know, there's, there's some other physical type things, but, you know, I think pound yeah. for pound, tennis is, is probably the, you know, the most demanding physically and mentally, you know, out there, or, or at least in the top two or three. For sure. So, sure. but, uh, you know, I was going to ask Phil also too, I wanted to, do you think the Brian brothers kids w- will play tennis and what kind of players would they be? Do you think that, uh, you know, um, yeah, you know, Mike just had his, his first child, a right. uh, little boy. Mm-hmm. Um, but, um, you know, Bob has three kids, right. um, uh, two boys and a girl and, and they're all playing mm-hmm. and I think they're getting into it and, and they do the music too. Just kind of how Wayne and Kathy, yeah. um, developed and brought, brought Bob and Mike up and, you know, uh, you know, uh, education, tennis, and music, and I think they're following kind of that that blueprint, if you will. And and um, he talks. Uh, Wayne's big on that side door motivation. Side you know, door. Take, take him, take him to a college match. You know, take him to uh, a Davis Cup. Take him to a pro match. Take him to watch Hans practice. You know, get him motivated by on the side. Um, you know, take him to a concert. You know, get get them motivated on the side without feeling like you had to push them where they want it themselves. And so, yeah, um, that's kind of, you know, my thought. I, I, don't, I don't think that they'll push them. I think they'll, they'll push, they'll nudge a little bit, and they'll, they'll direct and guide them. But if they're into baseball, kind of like, you know, uh, Andre and Steffi's yeah. uh, kid, uh, Jaden, who plays yeah. for USC as a freshman, I believe, phenomenal pitcher. Um, you know, I think they were pretty content that he got into the baseball. I don't think they wanted to you know, have to, to put him through. It's, it's just a lot of travel. And it's, 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 um, as I'm sure Hans kind of talked about, um, uh, in the first two sets of at the net, uh, podcast. So it, it's, it's just a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot on the road. You miss family. You miss a lot of things. There's a lot of upside to it, but it's, it's definitely not easy with, with the, uh, 37, 40 weeks on the road. Right. So, um, I, I you know, most parents like that just want their kids to be, to be happy and and they'll they'll introduce them to it and if it doesn't catch i think they're they're okay with it um as it's a tough individual you know uh, t- uh sport but there's a lot of a lot of upside to it and rewards and character building uh aspects to it as well yeah a lot of life lessons in tennis especially Absolutely. especially in early age and junior tennis you've got you know the, the kind of the honest factor when you're you know out there calling lines against the other kid that uh 
Uh, you, you could easily yep. fudge a few times, and we all know there's some fudgers out you there. You sure? Yes, yeah, so there's fudgers. You sure? Yes, I'm sure. Are you sure? All right. You can't be serious. Are you sure about that call? <laughs> sure. All right. Last two questions, Hans, and we'll let you go because we're at an hour and almost 40 minutes right now with you guys. Uh, if you wouldn't have been involved in sports or in tennis, what would you be doing right now, do you think? Music. I like music a lot. Oh, really? Yeah. Like uh, music like producing, music. music, what kind of uh, event planning? Um, what would you do? What kind of music? I don't know. I, I, I truly don't know. But I always said if I wasn't playing tennis, I would be playing baseball. If I wasn't playing baseball, I'd probably be part of some type of music deal. I don't know. Interesting. But, playing, yeah. lead, playing lead guitar for, for Headley, right? <laughs> for, for Hans and Franz band. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. All right. Last question. You up. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Last question. All right. Here it is. All right. All right. If you could make wave the magic wand in the great game, and this is a fun question to think about hypothetically as well, um, and may, or maybe not, because somebody might be listening who might get this uh, change. If you could make a change or changes, is there something that you'd like to see maybe that uh, out there as far as uh, a commissioner type of, uh, you know, uh, decision. What do you think? Or, what, what would you like to do to the great game? Or do you like it the way it is? And you know, maybe you keep it the way it is. You know, uh, one of, um, and there's a lot going on right now. I don't know if you guys have heard about this new players association. Yeah, that's PT coming yeah, up. Yeah. yeah, I actually got added to a WhatsApp group today with uh-huh. the, the PTPA or whatever. Um, and I think that's going to make a lot of changes, by the way. I've been to a few Zoom calls, and, and it looks very promising. And really? one of the biggest things is money, which is an uncomfortable topic, right? Sure, absolutely. But aside from money, uh, it, we want more players to be making a living, a career out of tennis, right? Sure. That's one. But the the other side, let's put money aside, um, it will be so cool to have – world team something world team tennis where you can be home a little more often right something more of a you know i, I think world team tennis is so awesome be, or labor cup because you have a home we we are playing for dallas we have a a home court we have a team we have a physiotherapist we have a coach we have an assistant coach we have a city supporting us um i think that's what's uh kind of with tennis is missing a little bit you know what i mean right now i mean you support the one player right or two players but i think playing as a team it will be you have a whole city behind you you have a i don't know i just feel like now and then you can have a season right you can have an actual more of a normal life you know you, you live in dallas okay so this is your home and you go play somewhere else but you come back home and you can have family and you can have I don't know. I think more of a normal life. I think tennis is pretty uh, brutal when it comes down to uh, all the traveling, all the, you know, planes, all this every week, your different spot. And hopefully you have people that support you. Right. And, and, you know, hopefully your parents are on board, maybe a few friends, maybe a mentor, maybe a coach that's watching you. But it's uh, pretty brutal. I think having something I don't have the answer to that, but having something along those lines where you compete for a city or a, a team or a, I don't know, country. I, I love Davis Scott, but it just makes it so much more fun. And, and uh, I don't know, I think that's just life, you know, being around it with people to help each other out. I think tennis is you fighting your neighbor all the time, you know, <laughs> fighting your friend, fighting, it's, it's a, which makes it cool. But at the same time, I think, you know, I don't know. But those are my thoughts. Do you, have you ever played in the Bundesliga? Do you ever play in that? Is, yeah, so I played, your, not German Bundesliga. club. Yeah. Bundesliga is yeah. like the top league, but right. I played in, in Division Three yeah. in Germany. Yeah, um, and I've played three, four years in a row for a team, and I love it. You don't understand mm-hmm. how much. You know, we go compete with another team, and we go at it, and we fight, and we compete. Then at the end of these matches, two teams get together, and the host puts on a lunch, it's always schnitzel and fries, and mm-hmm. you have a beer. And everybody, the two teams on the same table, hanging out, talking tennis, putting everything aside. And you get paid, and everything's great. And and, and then th- that's just life to me. I think it, it's awesome. That's what it's about. That. Would that work? Would that, right. would that format work in the U.S., do you think? 
I think so. Yeah. Why not? I think it's such a great, um, uh, format and, uh, I don't know. I don't know why it hasn't worked in the U.S. or why it hasn't been implemented, right? But uh, we're going to start it right here. We're going to start it right here today. We're going to get Coach Philly and you, AJ and myself. We're going to get involved in that, right? We're going to start that. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm thankful you know, like for it. the. For I love the, it. Ben I love Tree it. can come up with the open A team and yeah. play against Lakes or play against yeah. C or play against T Bar, and that just makes it. At the end of the day, we hang out and then. Mm-hmm. And it counts, right? People right. get paid, and then mm-hmm. it's just fun. I don't know. Play, playing for something bigger than yourself is always good. You know. Yeah. I love that idea. I credit uh, Franz, the hamster inside Hans's head. <laughs> That's it. Sir, uh, <laughs> coming up with this beautiful uh, answer. Thank you. It's, it's, it's rolling yeah. around right there. Well, gentlemen, we know we've taken an hour and 45 minutes of your time right now. Thank you very much for, for your time. This has been yeah. great. Hans, yeah. we're thankful for you. Philip, we're thankful for your surprise yes. appearance tonight. That was awesome. Awesome. I, I love that Philip is kind of a guest and kind of a co-host. Right. So I, I yeah. envisioned him to be here, you know, yes. up here, because we had the third headset ready for you. We, thank you so much, oh, both yeah. guys. Well, yeah, and thank you for your patience. I had to do some back-of-the-house stuff for a second. You didn't see me. I was working behind oh, the scenes. Oh, he had to, to try produce, to, yeah. Right, try to get this thing. This wasn't me that was able to put this on, but Philip asked a good question, We were, and appreciate uh, Dave the Brain from Back of the House yeah. you know, uh, telling me how to how to. Yeah, put this thank thing you, Dave. Yeah, yeah, thank you guys, and uh, it's a pleasure being on again, and yeah. especially with uh, with a player that I've, I've just loved uh, coaching and loved becoming closer with as a friend, and, yeah. and Hans, and uh, um, what a, what a fun what a fun time to, as as Hans just talked about, you know, playing with one another on the team, and then you have some food and you have a beer and you just you chat about life and tennis, and I feel like you know we didn't play tennis today, but we basically got on, we talked about it, and. We're having a great time, a lot of laughs, a lot of great stories, and and a lot of great conversation about this great game that we all have in common. We love so much. So um, I will definitely be in studio next time. I would have been there right. if I wasn't uh, if I wasn't traveling. But I'm glad I was able to jump on the call and make it work. Like my uh, old college coach said at OU, Paul Lockwood, he said, "Find a way." And we uh, found a way to surprise this great guest and, and Hans. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, it was a pleasure, guys. That was a great pop up. That was awesome, Hans. Oh, yeah. Huge thanks. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah. I, I want to echo Philip's uh, thought about the talking about the great game. So we'll get together one of these Thursday nights or something. He'll invite uh, us. Maybe we put James Scott uh, out there. There okay. he is. We'll get him going here in just a second. There we go. Hans Hotch on guitar. That's it. Lead guitar. <laughs> All right, thanks for listening to Season 1, Episode 84 of At The Net Podcast. That went that went by fast. Nice going. That was a oh. blast. Those guys are amazing. Join us next week, and so we'll be talking with Mike Burrell. Mike Burrell of Evolve of Nine. 9, right? Yes, it's a professional development program aimed at developing junior tennis players. Brilliant. So, yep, so it's going to be fun talking to Mike. Yep. Also join us Wednesday evening at 8 p.m. Sometimes we get over on Instagram, don't we? Every Wednesday night, baby. Yep. So join us for that one. We call that one Tennis Shorts. And we always ask the question, what's in Craig Bell's Tennis Shorts? And I always Find say out, uh, <laughs> a big zero. Big nothing's in my, my, my Tennis Shorts. Find I, out I Wednesday know. night at 8 on our Instagram. It's always two, two legs of the shorts, yep. right? Is yep. there one, two so, pockets, two questions. Yep. There we go. Oh, in fact, we have a great guest uh, this week on yeah. Wednesday. Emmy Caporale, who is, has written articles uh, for various tennis publications about an amazing tennis coach in Havana, Cuba. His name is Carly Lopez Toledo, and uh, she's written a couple articles about him, so I can't wait to talk to her. Yep, so we over there on our Instagram channel, at the Net Podcast Instagram. And lastly, be sure to tell a friend of friends. Hopefully your peeps will like us, and they'll yep. become netheads, right? That's right. We got, we got lots of netheads, so we can we always have room in, you know, on the court for more netheads, right? More netheads, uh, more likes, subscribe, share it, yep. and share the love. We love this game. We love you. Hopefully you guys love us too. And that's the tennis news as